Heist Battlegrounds Europa. You want to get it done, so let's get into it. I felt like I'd make a guide for this week's GM because it's easy, it's double loot, and it's for a brand new weapon and weapon archetype with the new Heavy Burst Fire Hand Cannon Warden's Law. So if you are needing more Ascendant Shards, you want the new weapons, maybe you just want to dip into Grandmaster Nightfalls, then this is a great week to start. So get in there and start grinding. So there are a lot of ways that you can get this done. There's not like one perfect solution that's just objectively the best, but there are a lot of really good ones out there. My team really likes having one Solar Warlock because obviously wells are awesome. And this Solar Warlock should be using the Cenotaph Exotic Helmet for pretty much on command heavy ammo for the other two players. If you don't have one yet, just wait until it's the right day and start grinding Lost Sectors. This is a very key exotic for a lot of Grandmaster Nightfalls. So you're you're gonna want one. Next, grab one Stasis Warlock using the Osmiomancy Gloves for crazy good ad control with all the Stasis turrets you'll be putting out, which I will actually be coming out with a video for in a couple days, so stay tuned for that. And lastly, very important, we brought a Void Hunter using Omni Oculus for skipping entire rooms, you get safe revives, and a very easy bomb deposit strategy for the final boss. As for weapons, we used Triple Wish Ender here because it hits like a truck and there are so many barrier champions here. If you don't have Wish Ender, go get it. As long as you have the Forsaken Pack, you need this weapon. And if you can't get through the Shattered Throne, just join my Discord. We do constant runs for it. It takes less than an hour to do from start to finish. For your energy weapon, use whatever you want. It doesn't matter too much. At least one person should have something to stun unstoppable champions. Fusion rifle, scout rifle, whatever you prefer. And I actually really liked using the Forbearance as the Stasis Warlock. Since most of the frozen red bar enemies will just shatter with one grenade, it's very satisfying. For heavy, arc rockets are definitely what you'll want here as there is an arc surge active. Hothead works great here. And if you wanted to switch out one person's wish ender to use a Galahorn instead, that's completely fine. The opening area while you're trying to avoid all the death lasers is actually very easy if you follow this path and have your hunter make you invisible as you move along. You'll see here there are certain points where we just kind of stop for a second, wait for the invisibility, and then we move to the next point. You never have to engage any enemies right here and you can move right along to the next area. Very easy opening section. For the next big room area, just take out the two barrier champions with your wish enders while hanging back here. Very safe. Stasis Warlock, just keep tossing out your turrets and it makes this incredibly easy. When everything is dead here, you'll have to move up just a little bit. You can pop a well right here. That's what we like to do. You should have plenty of time to wipe out most of the enemies here while you're in that well of radiance. But once it's out, more adds should spawn in which I then actually used my super to freeze and shatter all of the lower tier enemies. Everyone else should just continue to stay put, hang out in that middle area. Main thing here is just to hang back. Feel free to use your wish ender as much as possible. You'll be completely fine. You'll have a boss at the end. A couple more barrier champions will spawn in, but they're not difficult to take out. Use your rockets if you need to, because your Cenotaph Warlock should be tagging all of the champions to spawn tons of heavy ammo for you. And once everything is taken out in this room, you can progress to the next area. Just gather behind this container here, have your hunter make you go invisible, and just skip this whole room. There are no champions here in this room, so it is safe to skip. Once you make it to this next big room, you will again just need to sit back, deal with the barrier champions first, and keep those stasis turrets up to keep all of the other enemies controlled. We really never leave this balcony section because the cover is so good here and enemies rarely make it up to you. I don't even think they can. You will eventually have to watch out for the ogre fire as that can kill you very quickly. But as long as someone is stunning it every now and then, you'll be safe. And yeah, once that's over with, just head on to the next area. At this top area, you will have just one barrier champion with a couple other enemies. Very safe to kill with your wish enders, just hang back. Once everything is dead here, move up just a little bit, but you don't want to drop down yet as you will want to take out the two unstoppable champions from all the way up here for very safe kills. Dropping down to this next area will immediately trigger the battle song. So make sure to focus that acolyte. It will be marked on your map. That's going to avoid activating the streaker. So it's extremely important. In this clip here, I could have used heavy ammo here to kill it more quickly, but Wish Ender actually did okay. And once that acolyte is dead, just focus on the barrier champions as a team. There are quite a few of them in here. So you want to make sure you are team shooting them. There will be one unstoppable champion at the bottom, which can be a bit annoying, but as long as you're just watching out for it, you're stunning it every now and then you should be fine. I did not do that, so I ended up dying here. But that's it for this section. We're almost there. Don't be like me in this room. I don't know what I was doing. I just, why? 
Hopefully you make it through safe, but right here, make sure to instantly nuke these two barrier champions. They can be annoying if you don't deal with them immediately, so just, yeah, kill them quickly. Room can seem pretty hectic, but it's actually not bad, I promise. You can take out these barrier knights from all the way back here, and they usually group up, so you can tether them to make it even easier to kill them, but that did not happen here, unfortunately. Hang back here until most of the enemies that you can see are dead, then you can push up. We like to pop a well right here on this platform and absolutely nuke that first mini boss wizard. These wizards can nuke you if you're not careful, so prioritize them, especially if you are in close proximity to them. Once the left wizard is dead, you can start working on the right one, and obviously keep tossing those stasis grenades to keep any other ads controlled as you can see here they were pretty much all dead at this point so yeah actually a decently easy room here let's jump down the hatch when you get to the room or you have to grab the lasers to shoot the hive glyphs just have your hunter go grab the laser while they are invisible for as long as they can and the two other teammates can hang in the middle and focus fire the enemies that are waiting there those enemies can be kind of lethal if the hunter loses their invisibility so just shoot a rocket at them real quick and knock them out Eventually, some hive will spawn in behind you in the middle area, but if you place a stasis turret down beforehand, they will all be frozen and they can easily be dealt with with a single forbearance shot. As I said, it's very satisfying. As long as one person can help guard the hunter while they are retrieving that laser, and the other can keep the waves of enemies controlled, this area is a total breeze. And you will get a heavy ammo crate before the boss fight, so use as much of it as you want here. All right, so we are at the main boss now. This is the War Watcher, Eye of Zivu Aroth. There's a cheese here, so you can do that if you want. You'll just hop up here, use a wish ender from far away until you get it to 50% HP, clear out the ads from a distance, and just grab each bomb with your invisible hunter. It takes longer, but it's really safe. It's also pretty boring, which is why we didn't do it. The other method is much quicker and it's not that hard as long as we implement some strategy here. First order of business once everyone is ready is to have the hunter tether the shrieker and immediately activate the computer to start the fight. Whoever activates that computer will regenerate their super, so they'll essentially be getting a tether refunded back to them. The other two teammates will gather here underneath these stairs, pop a well once the shrieker starts going off, and rocket down that boss as quickly as possible. Stasis turrets should be tossed out here to help keep the adds at bay. Hopefully you can get the boss down to 50% before that well is expired, but if not, it's okay, don't worry about it. Just keep alternating those healing rifts to keep that healing going. Once you get the Shrieker down to 50% HP, it is time to dunk some bombs. You'll wanna clear out all of the lower tier enemies in the area and then focus on the bomb captain. No more enemies will spawn in until you dunk that bomb, so you should never be dunking when there are just waves of ads spawning at you. You're gonna die that way. Just hang behind this wall, stay safe, and clear them all out first. A hunter can and should use invisibility while dunking, there's no reason not to, because the moment any bomb is dunked, more adds will spawn in from all sides. If you feel like you have to wait until the warlock has two stasis turrets ready to go before each dunk, feel free to do so. You'll need to dunk five bombs here to initiate that second damage phase, so just don't get greedy here. I know it takes a little while, but that's fine. Once you deposit five bombs, be ready for a new wave of adds, a barrier champion, and of course, a shrieker shooting at you. It's best to take out the barrier champion first, just nuke it as a team. I know I've said this a thousand times, but most adds should be controlled by all the stasis turrets. And at this point, as long as everything is controlled, just unload on the boss. If you're really struggling on this second phase, you can actually have the hunter use their tether on enemies for even more control. It's not necessary though. The quicker you can kill the boss, the faster it's over. So you'll wanna use that tether on the boss if possible. And that's it here. Very straightforward strike. There are not too many parts that I can see ruining runs. Lots of areas to hang back and stay safe. But yeah, completing the run will get you the new Warden's Law Heavy Burst Hand Cannon, which is a brand new archetype that we've actually never seen before. This, in my opinion, is mostly a PvP hand cannon with the traits that it gets, but I did see Azagross put up some pretty crazy DPS numbers in PvE. But anyway, you should go farm it this week. It's always cool to get a new gun, and you also get double Ascendant Shards. If you need help here, you already know, join the Discord, and I will see you there or in the next video.